You have agency. You have agency. That's going to be the subject of this podcast. And as I see it, agency is divided into two categories, moral agency and kinetic agency. Moral agency, what is that? Moral agency is the ability to understand the difference between right and wrong and to make choices based on what is right and what is wrong. Kinetic agency. Kinetic relates to movement and action. Kinetic kinetic agency is that agency which comes from putting your damn body in the right direction and taking actionable steps to do the things that you know you need to do. It, it, it essentially comes down to taking action. Kinetic agency. When someone says, hey, you have kinetic agency, it just means you have the ability to physically put your damn body in motion and to do the things you need to do to carry out what is morally right and to stay on the path that your mission tells you to stay on. So you have agency. Now, why am I doing a podcast on this subject? Because I have noticed, and I've said this before on Twitter, I've said it many, many times, I've noticed there seems to be this epidemic of guys that just are just crippled by this sense of of paralysis, doubt, by this defeatism, by negativity, by I don't know what's going on. I can't understand what's going on. I don't know what the I don't know what's going. On. Nobody knows. Like nothing I do matters. Nothing makes any any matters. And my answer to that is bullshit, bullshit. Okay, you are in control of your own destiny to as great an extent to as great an extent as possible. We don't know where personal choice begins or where personal choices and actions leave off and fortune begins. That's a question for the gods. You're never going to understand that. I'm not going to ever understand that. The greatest minds in Western civilization have never understood it completely, and neither are you going to. So all we can do is focus on what we can do. And this sense of paralysis, this sense of, I can't do anything, nothing matters, everything's inscrutable, and okay, this is a disease. This is a real crippling disease. And I'm beginning to realize that this is being fostered in many ways by certain figures, by certain figures on the Internet. And I think partly in collaboration with foreign intelligence services because they want you to feel paralyzed. They want you to take the position that everything is everything is worthless. Nothing matters. Everything is screwed. Everything's hopeless because that's how they demoralize you. And that's how you become open to suggestion. That's how you become open to suggestion. And we'll get into that a little bit later on in this podcast. But the point here is the first thing to understand is that you are not, you are not a fucking twig in the Mississippi River just floating aimlessly down, doing circles in uh, forever in meaningless eddies and whirlpools. Okay, you are not that. You are not that. You are not a tuft of grass in a fucking cyclone, getting tossed here and there, being smacked up against trees, houses, ground, whatever. You are not. You are not that. And to think that that you are anything connected to that, to to believe that you are in any way an approximation of that, is a terrible, terrible idea to introduce into your mind. And you need to shake it off. Because what this does is this fosters a feeling of hopelessness and helplessness. Okay? You become separated from your duty to show gratitude. Gratitude for being alive. Gratitude for being on this earth. Gratitude for being able to work. Gratitude for having friends. Gratitude for having family. You throw all that away to focus on your own fucking selfish selfish sense of victimization. And this is a terrible, terrible burden to carry. It's a self-destructive burden to carry because it has no bottom. There's no bottom to it. Because once you go down that road, you're going to stay on that road. And this feeling of a lack of agency, it, it lowers your morale. 
It lowers your morale. And I've seen people on Twitter saying, this, the situation is really complicated. We don't really know what's going on. There's a lot of variables. There's a lot of permutations. And you know what I say to that? I say, bullshit. I say fucking bullshit. We know. We may not know every detailed parameter, but we know the major outlines of what's happening with certain events. We know the difference between right and wrong. We know what's correct. We know who's getting oppressed. We know who's being victimized and we know who's who's doing the oppressing. And if you can't see that, if you're if you're willing to turn your back on that, if you're willing to ignore what's morally right and to throw in your lot with what is obviously and evidently corrupt and unjust and and flying in the face of anything that's reasonable, then you're lost then you need to really check your soul and to check and see if you have a soul. But this is how it is. And this, lower, this, this lowering of the morale, I think this has been going on in the wake of, look, we've been, it's only now we're starting to come out, supposedly, suppo only now supposedly starting to come out of this COVID shit, bullshit that we've been involved in. And a lot of guys are crushed mentally, spiritually, maybe financially. It's hard. Okay. And there are legitimate grievances out there. I have never said, I have never sought to deny that there are not legitimate grievances out there against the system and against society, against the leaders. I have been the one saying from the beginning what those problems were. But the answer is not, I submit, to turn your back on your country, to betray your patrimony, to turn your back on your fellow countrymen, to slander them, to throw them under the bus, all to embrace some nebulous bullshit idea about how some foreign leader is your savior, this foreign leader who's going to somehow stand up to globalism and is going to save you and all this other fucking bullshit. Of course they want you to believe that. Of course their intelligence services want you to believe that because this helps them. Where do you think all this crazy corruption and leftist insanity came from in the first place? Where do you think this stuff originated from? Well, you know the answers. But what you're willing to do is you're willing to embrace your bitterness, your sense of victimhood. You're giving in to your negativity. You're giving into your negativity and your sense of immaturity. And instead of seeing the big picture, you're going to just throw in the towel and say, well, no one's ever, no one's ever stuck up for me. No one's ever done nothing for me. And uh, everybody, uh, uh, you know, I have not gotten anything out of them and everybody screwed me. And I said, well, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you. Okay. Nobody owes you shit. Nobody fucking owes you shit. If you're not getting what you want, the person whose responsibility or whose fault that is, is fucking you. And only you can change it. And the only way you're going to change it is if you cut off and cut loose from this sense of victimization, this sense of grievance. Because this is pussy shit. This is chicken shit, pussy, cupcake bullshit. And don't think for a minute that there aren't foreign intelligence services scouring the internet, scouring social media, and this is what they do. They want to sow these divisions and fragmentations in society. And what they do is they gravitate around certain figures and they feed and they stoke the fires and they stoke the fires and they stoke the fires. They've been doing it since the 30s and 40s and 50s. It's the same same shit. But you don't you don't see that because you haven't lived long enough to really get that big picture, and that's fine. These are some of the vices of youth, and, and I don't fault a lot of guys for it. But what I do fault them for is for going beyond what's reasonable, for taking this sense of grievance to, frankly, open betrayal, open betrayal of the society that nurtured them. And we need a real reinjection of patriotism in this country. We really do. Patriotism has to be taught. It doesn't just automatically, it's not just learned through osmosis. It has to be taught in the schools. 
And, you know, in many ways, I don't blame a lot of these guys. I don't blame a lot of you guys because nobody ever taught you the right way. Nobody ever fucking showed you the way. In many ways, you were neglected. You were abandoned. Never once have I ever said that you did not have legitimate grievances. Never once have I ever said that. You've known me for years. And never once have I ever said that many of the things that you talk about, not all, but many, or if not most, are based on legitimate grievances. But this is how foreign intelligence services operate. They seize on those legitimate grievances and then they force a conclusion that is bad, that is evil, that is self-destructive, and that favors them and not you. Okay, You think these motherfuckers give a shit about you? They hate your guts. They hate your guts. They hate, they hate you. They hate your country. They hate, they hate everything you stand for. And for you to turn a blind eye to that is a real sign of immaturity. And it's something you need to rethink very, very fucking hard. Because, you know, there's an old saying, you better remember where your fucking bread is buttered. You better remember where your bread is buttered. And you better remember what hand feeds you. Because, you know, patience only goes so far. And when certain lines are crossed, there's going to be consequences. There's going to be fucking consequences. You know, this is not a fucking joke here. We're living in 2022. Some serious shit going on around the world. And I've commented on that in Twitter. You know, the Chinese government recently uh, made an alliance with the Solomon Islands. And then they may end up putting a, a, a military base there. And isn't it amazing? This was the same Solomon Islands, of which Guadalcanal is one island, that was one of the major campaigns of the Second World War. We did not want the U.S. and its allies, did not want the Japanese military to establish a forward operating base in Guadalcanal. And that, that place had to be seized. That island had to be, had to be taken over. And here we are in 2022, and there are uh, additional threats from hostile powers. And yeah, China is a hostile power. It's a hostile military power. If there's anything the past two years has taught us, that it is a hostile power. Now, it's much sneakier than the Japanese were, much more, much more devious, much more sneaky, much more willing to play the long game, but definitely an enemy, without a doubt. And if you can't see that, you need to really re-examine your fucking sense of geopolitical awareness. You know. So, anyway, the point here is that you need to get in touch again with your sense of agency. You're not a fucking helpless twig. You're not some uh, tuft of grass floating in a fucking wind tunnel. Okay, you're a man. You're a man with responsibilities, with duties, and with obligations. Responsibilities, duties, and obligations. Responsibilities, duties, and fucking obligations. And you have agency. You're not helpless. You can do things. You know what's right and wrong. You have moral agency, and you have kinetic agency. You can make the decisions that are right based on what is right, and you can take actions based on what you know you need to do. And whether you're going to do it or not, that's up to you. Okay. And if you need any, need any guidance on what moral agency is and how, or on how, it's, um, how it shakes out, then look at the translations of Cicero's On Duties, On Moral Ends, and Tusculan Disputations that I've put out over the past few years. And you'll find everything you need to know between those covers. All right, so get out there, keep crunching, and get to work.